I found an old picture of myself stuck between the leaves of an old book on a sunny morning. The smile that was stuck in time made me think about who I was and who I am now. Know thyself, as Socrates said, but how many of us really go on this deep journey? Even though 80% of people think they know themselves very well, only 20% really get to know the core of who they are. I want you to look inside yourself, past the social masks and standards. Today, what are you going to learn about yourself? Let's talk more about this in the video, so make sure you subscribe to stay with us on this trip. Being self-aware. Have you ever thought about why, even when we are the main character in our own lives, we can feel lost when we meet the bad guys? Today, we're going to talk about how self-awareness can help you find your way on this trip. Being aware of yourself is like having a plan when you're in a place you don't know. When you know yourself, you know both your skills and weaknesses. This means that problems can be turned into opportunities to grow. Imagine being able to tell the difference between when someone says something bad about you and when it's just the other person's choice to be mean. This is not a way to cut yourself off from other people. It's a way to make connections with them deeper. When you go deep inside, you come out with a shield that can block out other people's negativity without letting it get inside you. And how do you get better at this art? By constantly thinking about it, like breathing or drinking water, make it a habit. Every time something hard happens, ask yourself, what does this teach me about myself? This will not only stop harmful people from hurting others, but it will also help you make better choices. Take a look around. Every contact is a chance to practice being self-aware because in the end, the biggest win is beating yourself and reaching a state of peace and control that no one else can disturb. Remember that every step you take towards self-awareness makes it easier for others to do the same. To forgive and remember. As we go through life, there are times when we have to make decisions that affect not only who we are, but also who we will become. When we talk about forgiveness and memory, we're in search of inner peace, a safe harbor in these rough seas. How then do we keep this fine line between forgetting and forgiving? Forgiving someone doesn't mean getting rid of the memories. It means changing how we relate to them. Think about being an artist. Every event, good or bad, is like a rough piece of marble. We can make beauty out of pain when we forgive each other. Of course, remembering is what keeps us from cutting our fingers in the process. Think about this. When we forgive, we make room in our hearts for new connections. These are healthier bonds that grow from a place of understanding and empathy. We built a fence around this garden, not to keep other people out, but to keep the young plants safe from storms in the past. Being strong is the most beautiful flower in this yard. It doesn't grow in spite of problems, it grows because of them. Remembering how cold it was in the winter makes us enjoy the sun in the spring. Relationships that have learned how to dance in the rain through memories of other storms are healthier than ones that don't have any problems. Remember that forgiving someone is like opening a door to the future. Remembering is like keeping the key. Don't live in the past. Instead, learn from it and make tomorrow better. To live well, you need to find a balance between the joy of forgiving and the smarts of remembering. Putting limits on. Have you noticed that we can feel too busy when we don't say no when we need to? Setting boundaries isn't just about making walls though. It's also about making room for better relationships and real happiness. Think of your life as a garden. The lines between you and other people are like walls that keep your plants safe. Anyone can come in and step on the flowers without them. It takes courage to set limits and say, this is me, and this is what I need to feel safe and respected. And you know what? Not only will this protect you, but it will also teach others to respect your space, which will help you build relationships based on respect. 
But how can you do this without coming off as cold or rigid? Getting the word out is key. Being honest about your limits is not a sign of selfishness, but of self-respect and understanding. I value our relationship and want it to be the best it can be for both of us is what it means. This not only makes the bond stronger, but it also creates an atmosphere where everyone feels heard and valued. Now I want you to do something. You should think about your limits. Are they well-defined? Don't have any yet. What's the first thing you can do today to start making them? Don't forget that every little thing you do helps you build healthier relationships and a safe personal place. So let's start this process of self-awareness and respecting each other together. Smart energy use. Every day we charge our cell phones to make sure they work. Have you ever thought about how we need to recharge our energy too? Energy intelligence is the art of controlling your own energy in a way that affects not only yourself but also those around you, making a calm environment and encouraging healthy behaviours. I'm not just talking about getting enough sleep or going on vacations. As an example, think about meditation. Meditation is much more than just a quiet moment. It is a strong way to reset your mind and body, getting in touch with your center and creating good energy. Have you ever thought about how a short meditation lesson can change your day, making it calmer and more productive? Also, what about food? Choosing the right fuel for your car can help it run better, and the food we eat can help us get the most out of our energy. A healthy, well-balanced diet full of nutrients not only feeds the body but also the mind, which has a direct effect on our ability to stay calm and make smart choices. But here's an idea. Controlling your own energy isn't just something you can do on your own. It also means being aware of how your energy affects other people and how you can make the world a better place. Have you ever noticed how someone who is calm and in control can calm down a whole room? That's the power of energy intelligence. Now I want you to think about how you're managing your energy. Are you giving yourself the right fuel, both mentally and physically, to deal with the challenges of everyday life? Remember that small changes you make to your routine, like meditating and eating mindfully, can make a big difference. Are you ready to start recharging? If you're enjoying this, leave your comment and like to help this video reach more people. And don't forget to subscribe. Focus on goals. In our daily journey towards success and personal fulfillment, one skill stands out as crucial, the ability to maintain focus on our objectives. Believe me, it's not just about having a list of goals. It's about the inner strength to stay on course, especially when facing adversity or people who intentionally or not try to steer us off track. This is where emotional intelligence comes into play. Our true superpower, individuals with high emotional intelligence have a sharp radar to identify and protect themselves against toxic influences. They understand that the environment around them can either energize or drain their motivation. How do they do this? Firstly, through self-awareness recognizing their emotions and how they influence their actions. This deep understanding enables them to remain calm and clear, even when surrounded by negativity. Moreover, the ability of empathy, another pillar of emotional intelligence, helps to understand the motives behind others' actions without allowing them to affect their emotional balance. Instead of being dragged into others' dramas, these individuals use empathy to protect themselves and move forward, keeping their goals in sight. But how does this apply in practice? Let's simplify. Imagine your goal as a lighthouse on the horizon. The waves and storms are the distractions and toxic people that arise along the way. With your internal compass of emotional intelligence, you can navigate through these turbulent waters without losing sight of your lighthouse adjusting the sails, your actions and reactions, to stay the course. 
Now, I invite you to reflect. What are the lighthouses you are seeking? How have the waves tried to steer you off course? And most importantly, how can you adjust your sails to maintain focus on what truly matters? Remember, success and personal satisfaction are not just about achieving goals, but about the journey to get there facing and overcoming obstacles with resilience and emotional intelligence, seeking support. In our journey through life, we encounter mountains that seem insurmountable, challenges and obstacles that test our strength. But no matter how much we believe in our ability to overcome them alone, there is a fundamental truth we cannot ignore. We all need support. The journey becomes lighter and more meaningful when shared with friends, family or professionals who offer us a helping hand, a comforting word, or a different perspective. Imagine you're facing a maze alone. You try to find the way out, navigating paths that lead to dead ends. Now imagine you have a drone that can see the maze from above. That drone represents the people who support you. They offer a view that you, trapped in the maze, cannot see. Friends and family may not have all the answers, but the simple act of listening and sharing experiences can shed light, revealing paths that were previously invisible. And when it comes to emotional or psychological challenges, the guidance of professionals can be the guide we need to traverse dense and dark forests. Psychologists, therapists and counselors are like experienced explorers who know the shortcuts and hidden traps in the jungle of our minds. Seeking support is not a sign of weakness, it's a demonstration of strength. It's recognizing that we are social beings interconnected and that our ability to grow and overcome challenges expands exponentially when we are open to receiving help. The different perspectives and experiences of others are like pieces of a puzzle that, when put together, can complete the picture we are trying to form. So the next time you find yourself facing a challenge, remember that you don't have to face it alone. Reach out share your struggles and allow the multiplicity of views and the motivational support from those around you to help you find new perspectives and solutions. Together, we are stronger, wiser and infinitely more capable. Control of negative self-talk. You know that internal critic that seems to have a megaphone always ready to highlight our flaws and fears. This negative self-talk can be one of the biggest obstacles to our well-being and personal growth. However, with the right techniques, it's possible to transform this critic into an ally, promoting a positive self-image and reducing anxiety. First, let's talk about reframing thoughts. Imagine that every negative thought is like a dark cloud in the sky of your mind, Reframing these thoughts is like finding the silver lining in those clouds. For example, instead of thinking, I can never get this right, we can reframe it to I'm facing challenges, but I'm learning and growing with each experience. This change in narrative not only relieves pressure, but also opens up space for growth and learning. Another powerful technique is the practice of mindfulness. This means being fully present in the moment, observing our thoughts and feelings without judgment. When we find ourselves caught in a whirlwind of negativity, mindfulness helps us take a step back, observe those thoughts as passing clouds and not as absolute truths. With this perspective, we can choose which thoughts deserve our energy and which we can let go of. Additionally, gratitude is an underestimated tool in controlling negative self-talk. At the end of each day, try to list three things you're grateful for. This simple act can shift your focus from what's lacking to what's abundant in your life, nurturing a more positive view of yourself and the world around you. Finally, remember that self-compassion is essential. We all have moments of doubt and insecurity, but offering ourselves compassion as we would to a friend can make a big difference. The next time your internal dialogue becomes harsh, ask yourself, would I say this to someone I love? If the answer is no, it's time to change the conversation. Changing negative self-talk doesn't happen overnight, but with practice and patience, 
you can turn this inner critic into a motivating coach. And don't forget to celebrate every small step you take in the right direction. Solution-oriented approach. In a world that often seems full of problems, being able to keep a solution-oriented mindset can be your golden compass. This way of thinking doesn't dwell on problems and obstacles, but instead actively seeks practical solutions. This way of thinking not only makes us stronger in the face of adversity, but it also gives us the power to use creativity, adaptability, and cooperation. Imagine you're a navigator on a stormy sea. Creativity is your mast on this journey. It allows you to see beyond conventional solutions, finding new paths and possibilities where others see dead ends. When we face a problem, it's easy to get stuck in how we've always done things, but it's in the ability to think outside the box that we often find the answers we seek. Adaptability is the sail that propels you in a constantly changing world. The ability to adapt and mold oneself to new circumstances is crucial. This means being willing to learn, adjust, and sometimes accept that the first solution that comes to mind may not be the best. Adaptability is about flowing with the changes, not against them. Finally, cooperation is the rudder that helps navigate. Many problems are too complex to be solved alone. By joining forces with others, sharing knowledge, skills, and perspectives, we can find more effective and sustainable solutions. Cooperation highlights the importance of each individual and how together we can achieve more than the sum of our parts. Now, I invite you to reflect. When faced with problems that arise, is your first reaction to focus on obstacles or seek solutions? Remember, every challenge is an opportunity to grow, learn, and innovate. Keep your compass oriented towards solutions. Adjust your sails with creativity and adaptability. And remember that together, we are stronger. Thus, there is no storm that cannot be navigated. Avoiding unnecessary arguments. Navigating the complex world of human interactions can sometimes put us on collision courses with unnecessary arguments, especially when they involve people whose energies seem more draining than enriching. However, adopting some effective strategies can help us avoid these storms preserving our inner peace and maintaining more harmonious relationships. Firstly, focusing on similarities instead of differences can be a guiding light that leads us to calmer waters. When we concentrate on what we have in common with others, we create a foundation of mutual understanding. This doesn't mean ignoring differences or compromising our values, but rather finding common ground that can serve as a starting point for constructive dialogue. Remember, it's easier to build bridges when we have a solid foundation. Knowing when to withdraw is another crucial skill. Not every argument deserves your time and energy. Recognizing the signs that a conversation is heading into unproductive territory is essential. If you sense that the discussion will lead to nothing productive, gracefully step back. This is not a sign of defeat, but of emotional intelligence and self-preservation. Choose your battles is an adage that applies perfectly here. Furthermore, replacing statements with questions is a powerful tool for diffusing tensions. Questions encourage reflection and dialogue rather than confrontation. For example, instead of stating, you are wrong, try asking, can you explain your point of view better to me? This shows that you're willing to understand the other side and can turn a potential argument into a useful exchange of ideas. Besides these tips, it's also good to remember that everyone has their own problems and points of view. By putting ourselves in the other person's shoes, even if we don't agree, we can build a deeper understanding that goes beyond short-term disagreements. Detection of false cordiality. Identifying signs of false cordiality is like learning to decipher a secret code in the vast universe of human interactions. 
the ability to perceive when someone is genuinely friendly or if there are hidden intentions can protect you from manipulations and contribute to the development of more authentic and meaningful relationships. Here are some tools to help you unravel this code. Body language is a window to a person's true intentions. Signs such as a smile that does reach the eyes, closed postures or evasive eye contact can indicate that the displayed cordiality is not entirely sincere. Think about the difference between a genuine smile, which lights up the entire face and often involves the whole body, and a forced smile limited only to the lips. Learning to read these signs can provide important clues about the true nature of the interaction. Tone of voice is also revealing. Genuine cordiality is often accompanied by a warm, inclusive and consistent tone of voice. On the other hand, false cordiality can manifest through an overly sweet tone that seems out of place with the situation or sudden variations in tone that do not match the natural flow of the conversation. Pay attention to the congruence between what is being said and how it is being said. Consistency of behavior is another key indicator. Genuine people tend to be consistent in their actions and in the way they treat others, regardless of the situation. If someone demonstrates cordiality that fluctuates drastically or seems selective based on who is present or what benefits can be obtained, this may be a red flag. Lastly, trust your intuition. Often, we have an instinctive feeling when something is not right. If you feel uncomfortable or sense that someone's cordiality is not genuine, pay attention to these feelings. They are your subconscious picking up on subtleties that your conscious mind may not immediately perceive. Protecting yourself from false cordiality does not mean closing yourself off to new relationships, but rather opening yourself up to more genuine and meaningful connections. By enhancing your ability to discern the intentions of others, you better equip yourself to navigate the complex world of human relationships, promoting an environment of authenticity and mutual respect.